I would like to read, reread a few scriptures, a few portions. And it says, starting at verse 5, Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He set them in place forever and ever, and he gave a decree that will never pass away. Verse 14, he has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all of his saints of Israel, the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. So if I were going to give you a thought to hang your hat on for just a few minutes on this snowy Sunday morning in January, it would be the duty of praise. The duty of praise. <coughs> our Father and our God, we come before you with humble thanks. Thank you, O oh God, for being able to gather in this warm place to worship you and to honor you on this Lord's Day in the first month of 2016. We thank you, O oh God, that we braved the elements to gather together and that you have not forgotten what it what we went through to get here because you came in and ushered, ushered in your presence, ushered in your power, ushered in your anointing, and for that we are grateful. We ask, oh God, that you come in and do in us and for us all that we stand in need of so that we will praise and we will worship and we will glorify you in all we do. I ask now, oh God, as your hand made it to hide me behind the cross so I'm not seen in this place anymore. And even though it's my voice that goes forth, let those who belong to you hear what you have to say out of this word for them. And we give you thanks in advance because we declare that it already is. Amen. The duty of praise. This psalm is an earnest call for all creatures and all creation according to their ability to praise. To show, their, to show their creator his eternal power and authority. The psalmist is satisfied that God is praised somewhere, somehow. But he, with great affection, is calling for everything, whether it has breath or not, to praise. The call of this psalm is to engage all created things around the psalmist to the pleasant duty of praising God. As we look through these verses, and I'm just going to go uh, verse by verse, he calls first on praise the Lord from the heavens and praise him in the heights above. Praise him all his angels and praise him all his heavenly hosts. That means that in heaven where he is, praise should be what? Going on. Going on. Praise should be going on because he's there. And if we just studied Revelation, and I could see the cherubim and the seraphim going from the altar and to the throne, crying, holy, holy. And I get chills when I think about it. And I know that um, Gabriel and all of those um, angels of authority praise him. But he has 10,000 times 10,000 angels called the host that praise him. Because he's worthy. I see the 20 and the 4 elders throwing down their crowns, their authority, their, their worthiness, and praising God. I see the throngs around the, 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 the heavenly city, and they're just in praise. Praise goes on in the heaven. Amen? Why does praise go on in the heaven? Because he's worthy. It's a, just a simple response. They were created beings without any sin. But they praise. Why? Because when you're in the presence of God, that's all you can do. But they praise. And what I love about the picture that Revelation shares with us about heaven is they're not interrupted in their worship and their praise by jobs. They're not interrupted with sick children who need attention and, and, and husbands or wives who are calling for our affection. This is interrupted worship. It's interrupted praise. 
And that should frame what we do down here. Because it's their 24 7, 365, if they have a calendar job, it is their duty. And then it says in verse 3, praise him, sun, moon. Praise him, all ye shining stars. Well, how does the sun and the moon praise? Well, they do as they were created to do. Hello, somebody. The sun shines. Light. The earth allows the vegetation to grow and the oxygen to be made so that we can breathe. The Sun is doing what it was created to do. What does the moon do? Well, the moon in its turn reflects the light of the sun back into glory, back into the heaven. Why? Because that's what it was created to do. And even though the stars have a lesser light than the sun and the moon, are they, are they praising? Yes, they are. Because on a clear night without clouds, you can see them twinkling to the left and twinkling to the right. You can see Orion and, and Aquarius and even Taurus the Bull over here in the southwest doing what they were created to do. Framing what we should be doing on earth. But you're saying, now, angels are intelligent beings. And, but sun and st they have no intelligence. So that tells me that every created thing can pray. Amen. The rocks. The Bible says they can cry out. Hello, somebody. That should put you into the mind of, well, what am I doing? But we're going to get to us in just a minute. And then in verse 4, it says, You highest heaven, you waters above the skies. And even the water above the skies prays. How do I know? Because when we go over to verse 8, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, storm winds do his bidding. Well, how is that praise? Because they were doing what they were created to do. Hello, somebody. You saying a snow? Yes, a snowflake in creation is unique and individual. But when God commands the snow to come like on today, that means every individual snowflake called to attention attends to his duty. They, were, he, they did what they were supposed to do. He created them to fall, to make beautiful Christmas cards and landscapes somewhere, and to get in our way when we were coming to church. But that's all right. He wanted to know if I was going to press my way through the uniqueness of these snowflakes and arrive here. Amen. But it says the waters above the heavens even worship. They praise. Let them praise the name of the Lord for he commanded and they were created. God spoke into nothing and created the sun, the moon, and the stars. But they praise. Because they're doing exactly what they were created to do. How do I know that? Because he commanded it. Put them in their orbits around the earth. He commanded and allowed the sun to shine. So, so many million miles. So it warms but does not consume us in fire. He commanded that the, the, the lunar calendar comes in every 28 days. And shines and causes the plants to do what they do. He commanded them. And they obey. All right. I'm going to get to us in just a minute. That's all right. you can go ahead, Bella. He set them in place forever and ever. And until he says, until he commands something different, that cycle, that orbit, that revolution is going to be. I love that about these inanimate objects. But they're obedient to their call. And to the place that has been given them. I'm going to talk about us in just a minute. Let me get there. He gave a decree that will never pass away until he makes a separate decree. <clears throat> Let's look at earth. It says, praise the Lord from the earth. Now, the praises of heaven come down. Then the praises of the earth go back. And that reminds me of the light of the light of the sun. The light from the sun comes from the heavens down to the earth, but it's reflected back. Even though it's a little bit lesser in, in volume, it's a lesser brightness, 
there should be some reflection going on. Well, well, Hello, somebody. Well, Y'all getting where I'm going? Well, Are you picking up what I'm putting down? That as the heavenly host and the and the, the, the billions of, of beings in heaven praise, they should only frame what we're doing down here. Just like the lights reflected. We should know their praise, feel their praise, sense their praise, and let it frame what we're doing to send it back to the heavens. It said, let the earth praise the Lord. You great sea creatures and ocean depths. Another version of the Bible said the, the dragons and the sea serpents. Whatever they are called in 2016, whether it's a Leviathan or that thing over the Loch Ness Monster. I don't care. It says let the great ocean creatures and all the ocean depths praise. Well, tell me, how does the ocean praise? Well, the ocean was set in, in motion by the lunar calendar, so it rises in praise. And then it recedes in adoration. Then it rises in praise and recedes in adoration. It does what it's supposed to do. Then the fish swim. Why? Because that's what they were created to do. <laughs> and then they were created to swim the oceans and these fins are going back and forth that's just another thing like worshiping that's just another hallelujah God you gave me the oceans and I praise you in every inch I can get to I'm just talking about the fish okay and we talked about the lightning and the hail and the snow it de it's designed and it's commanded and it does what it was created to do. Who? And you mountains and hills. Well, you said that's an inanimate object. How can mountains and hills praise? Well, whether you know it or not, mountains grow because of the heat of the depths of the ocean, uh, depths of the earth, and it pushes up that granite. It pushes up that, that stalactite and magtite. It pushes it up, and as they reach toward the heavens, it's like somebody reaching their hands out to worship and to praise. Now, if they were just created to stand there, if they stand there in the windstorm and in the rainstorm, then that's what, they're, that's what they're doing. They were created to do. And so they're worshiping. They're praising because they're doing what they were designed to do. I said, God, everything, everything, it said the fruit trees and all the cedars. A fruit tree? Well, guess what? A fruit tree has a cycle and it bears fruit. That's good for my nourishment. Because uh -huh. I love pomegranates. Well. And I love some grapes. Uh -huh. And those honey crisp apples. Yes. A new discovery. Hallelujah. <laughs> but the trees praise. Why? How? Because they bring forth fruit. Why? Because that's what they were created to do. I love it. I said, a tree can praise. And then it said, all the cedars. I said, well, a cedar is just like a pine tree. But a cedar can be cut down and made into furniture and made into things. And you can open it and smell the fragrance. I want to be opened up and smell, smell like praise. Amen. Because if a cedar, because it was designed, it was doing what it was designed to do, can can let off a fragrance that will remind you to just yeah. raise your. I want my life to be that open oh, yeah. and give off a fragrance yeah. of praise. Amen. Y'all yeah. getting this? Yeah. And then it says wild animal and cattle, small creatures and flying birds, everything. When it does what it has been designed to do. It's a praise. You might call a gnat an irritant. But a gnat does the um, cross-pollination with the bees and all that kind of stuff. They have their purpose. And when they are doing what they've been designed to do, that is a praise to the creator. It might be an aggravation to us getting them out of our house. But they're still doing what they were designed. Flies, zoop, 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 mosquitoes. They're supposed to do what they do, even if it's an annoyance to us. 
when you do what you were created to do, it's a praise. I don't, I don't mind disrupting Brother Deloney if I'm doing what I've been designed to do. Brother Deloney has to talk to the creator. Say, God made me like this. Talk to him. I'm not supposed to be an irritant. You know what I'm saying? But if I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, like mosquitoes and gnats and nasty flies, if they are doing their purpose, fulfilling their purpose, what is that called? Praise. That's called praise. Amen. Yes. Now we come to the peoples. Well. It says kings of the earth uh -huh. and all nations. If it's a king, you are of the ruling class. That means you are a person of authority. But you have to understand you're under authority as well. If you are man, you are flesh and blood, I don't care how high you get up on the totem pole, there's something above you. I don't care how high you raise in the company in Toledo Public Schools or in Chrysler. If you are not at the top and you can't see God, there's somebody above you. So even in all of your authority, you are supposed to praise. That means your authority ain't as what you, is, is not as valuable as you think it is. I don't care what title you hold, pastor or trustee or associate minister or usher or the person... <laughs> Excuse me, who cleans the bathroom. It says kings and all nations need to praise. We need to get off our high horses, amen? And understand that we are all people under the duty of praise. And then it says, okay, princes and all rulers. Come on, it, it can be the grand poobah of the elves or the the Knights of Columbus, or what is the potentate. the potentate of the and what's the other men's thing? The Masons. The Grand Master and the Potentate and the Grand Poobah, whatever you are. It says everybody who is somebody ought to praise. And not just praise the, the person who is the head of your organization. Not just praise whoever can put you in position. But you are to learn to praise the creator if you are doing what you've been designed to do. And the song that, I, that came back to my mind as I was reading this scripture says, I was created to do what? To make his praise what? How can we make his praise glorious when it's all about us? How can we make his praise glorious when, oh, well, they didn't call my name. They didn't include me. They didn't please. Get over it and over that. Because we were created to make his praise glorious. It didn't say when you're having a good day. The word didn't say when everything's going fine at your house. It just said that you were created for a purpose. And when you are fulfilling that purpose, like the trees and the mountains and the uh, and the um the seas, the creatures of the sea, then that is praise. No, you can't say, "Well, God, I ain't feeling praise today because you know my my paycheck is late, well, or they call and 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 the bill collector want his." No, nah, that had nothing to do with God. This is up to you. That's all. That's for you. But if you have life, if you have health, if you have strength, then he ought to get some. That's all I'm saying. I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. But it didn't just say those that are in the church because it said, and those that are in the ruler and, and authority, it said young men and maidens. That means little, little guys and little girls. What you supposed to be doing? <coughs> praising. Yeah. Lele, when you dance, yeah. you praise. Yeah. You worship. Yeah. And do you know that angels get so excited that they start turning somersaults in heaven because of you? Because you do it with such sincerity. You do it with such an earnest worship toward God. 
and not only you feel it, and God knows it, but you make us feel it too. That's right. That's right. And that is praise. And don't you ever stop. Don't you ever stop. Because that makes God's heart smile. Because of you. Everybody should in here want God's heart to smile because of them. He ain't smiling at some of us. Amen. But you keep doing what you're doing. Because you make his heart smile. So young men and young women. Uh oh. Old oh, men. Well, you don't get too old. Well, if there's life in the body, if there's breath in the body, you are not too old to praise. In fact, if you if you get over fifty and your eyes are open in the morning, hallelujah. And then if one leg fall out the bed and it feel okay, this time for another praise. And if you get the other one on the floor. I can all, oh, I'm almost standing, God. It's time for another praise break. And then if you can stand on both of them, hallelujah. Then it's time for a dance. Because everybody can't. And those who can sometimes won't. But we're talking about the duty of praise. We have a duty. <laughs> 13 says, let them praise the name of the Lord. Why? Because his name alone is exalted. I don't care how many degrees you get behind your name. The Reverend Dr. Arlene Hodges, Cole Huckabee, PhD, EDD, the Doctor of Philosophy, I don't care. His name is exalted. Just his name, not what he does and who he is, just his name. Because at the name of Jesus, every tongue, every knee, and nobody's going to be able to stand before him. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. I got it wrong, but that's okay. That's, the order didn't really matter. But it's at the name of Jesus. Why? Because his name alone is exalted. You don't hear them call, um, who was the president of Chrysler? A cupola or Iacocca. You don't hear him called in heaven. I read, the, I read Revelations and he wasn't mentioned one time, okay? Dr. E. Rome. What's the TPS superintendent? Romulus Durant, his name was not mentioned in Revelations because I read it. Now Jesus is called the Son of Man and the Son of God and the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. But he still, his name is exalted because he's all of those things. But I don't care how many letters you get behind your name, your name is not exalted. It may be exalted in your circle like, oh, I know Dr. Huckabee. Or hugs the bowl, whatever. <laughs> but you better get to know Jesus. Because his name is exalted. And his splendor is above the heavens and the earth. And we talked about the glorious um, kingdom that's going to be heaven. We talked about the new Jerusalem coming down. And we talked about the splendor of the pearl walls with the jewels set in the 12, 12 walls and the giant pearls and all of this stuff that the street is paid with what we spend our money for gold. The splendor of it. But his splendor is above the earth. I, don't, I love a beautiful landscape, you know, with a sun rising in the background and, and mountains and trees and beautiful flowers and green grass. But his splendor is above what I can find on earth. His splendor is above that picture that I have in, of heaven. Because that is why he should be praised. For he has raised up his people a horn. He has raised up his people a strong one. That means authority and strength. And he couldn't find nobody better than who? Himself. He swears by himself. So he has raised up himself to be our standard. And 
then it says, the praise, he has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his saints. That's why he said, if you don't have anything to thank God for, think again. I have already set the example of why should you praise. I've already set the reasons you should be in worship. I've already set before you the frame because it's coming down from glory where they praise me 24-7. That should be just the framework of your praise coming back up. Because my name is exalted above Mount Rushmore. Above Mount McKinley, above Mount St. Helen, above the city that, that, that has come together because of me. I'm sitting in the midst of it, but the city came together because I'm exalted. He has raised up for his people a strong one. The praise of all his saints of Israel. The people close to his heart. What was the last thing he asked the people close to his heart to do? Praise the Lord. He was talking, or this psalm was indicating the children of Israel. But guess what? When he said, whosoever will, let them come. I'm so glad he included me. Because now I can say, I am a daughter of the king. I No, I am a son of God. That's the word. We make it gender. But I am a son of God. That he has raised me up to be close to his heart. So what is my duty? Praise the Lord. That means do what I have been created to do. Use the gifts he's already deposited in me. To praise him. Sometimes I can teach a little bit, Sister Peggy. Sometimes, uh, Sister Jay, I can even preach a little bit. Well, I can't sing like you, Brother Chris, but I'm working on it. Well, but whatever he has deposited in me, if I use it, he is a praise back to him. Amen. It is a praise back to him. That's my duty. Oh, I'm sorry. Every day that he sends the sun to rise, Sorry, Sister Christine. <laughs> Every day he sends the sun to rise. I have to do what's in me. I have to use what he's given me. I have to do what he's created me to do. And that's his praise. He don't want me to play a piano because I can't touch Sister Allison. I have plucked and plicked and paid somebody and they said, Please don't leave your day job. <laughs> I understand. I got two right ones or two left ones, but anyway, you need one of each to play. I don't have that. But when I do what I've been created to do, uh -huh. that's the praise. Uh -huh. That's the praise. He's not asking me to be a fantastic cook like Sister Peggy. Y'all be going hungry. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Ain't nothing like the truth. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Woo! But he asked me to do what he's created me to do. And if I can do that, that's worship. If I'm willing to do that, that's praise. If I don't complain about doing that, but I just go ahead and do it. And whoever it blesses, it blesses. Whoever it convicts, it convicts. Whoever it convinces, it convinces. Amen. But if I do me, the me he's created, that's grace. And that's our duty. That's all he has asked us to do. I said, Lord, is that all? Is that all there is? That's it? I went, oh, I can do that. I can do, just, I can be me. Yes. I can be the best me. And that's the best prayer. Stop complaining about what he's called you to do. And just do it. Stop complaining about who he's called you to. And just go. I said, Lord, 
If that's duty, yeah. if that's the duty of praise, I can do it. And not only can I do it, but in this 2016, yeah. this sweet thing we got going on with you, yeah. I said, I'm going to do it. Oh, the best me you haven't seen yet. I'm going to be the best me for his glory. The best me for his glory in tweet 16. God bless you. Amen. 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 That was cute.